This show me addresses multiplication properties of exponents. In point of fact, only one property of exponents is actually explained in this show me, but it has diverse applications, and we're going to have a lot of examples to help you see how to use it. There will be three parts to this show me. The first part, we're going to talk for a moment about the nature of exponents and what they really mean and indicate. Then I'll introduce the property that's central to the section. And finally, we'll do 11 examples that demonstrate clearly how to use it in different situations. Take a look at this power. We read it x to the fourth power. We see an x and we see a 4. The 4 is superscripted up above. That means that there really isn't a 4 in this expression at all. Yes, we see the 4. And we're going to work with it as though it's actually present. We're going to do things with that 4 that we would normally do with a 4. But it's really important to remember, as you work, that if you actually wrote this expression in terms of what it really means, there would not be a 4 anywhere on your paper or on the screen. This is crucial. An exponent is a shorthand. We just don't want to write four x's when we can just write an x and a superscripted four and stop there. Some people like to call that the laziness of mathematicians, but the fact is the more you learn about mathematics, the more you realize the complicated questions we ask in math classes have complicated answers, and you have to work with complicated expressions. Sometimes it's really nice to be able to simplify what you have to write, to keep things short and to the point. This is one way in which we mathematicians try to keep our work more concise. It's important. As I showed you in the Show Me on Scientific Notation, some of these numbers are virtually impossible to understand when you actually write them as they appear in base 10. The same thing could be true when you're dealing with an exponential expression. If it weren't x to the fourth, but say x to the 45th, a list of 45 x's is not going to enhance anyone's understanding. Again, it's important to remember, the exponent is a counter. The number that is in the exponent's position is not actually present in the work that you're doing. The property at the heart of this next section that we're talking about relies on an understanding of an expression like this. What you're looking at is the product of two powers and the important thing to not acknowledge about this product is that each power has the same base. Both of these are powers of A. If the two powers that we are multiplying together in some situation don't have a common base, then the rule I'm about to show you simply does not apply. So before you try to use this rule, you must check carefully and make sure that the expression you're dealing with has a product of two powers that have the same base. If they do, then you can simplify that product by simply adding the exponents. As I said in the previous screen, we're going to treat these exponents as though they are actual numbers that are present in the work that we're doing, but they are not actually present. Consider an example. 4 to the third times 4 to the third well, this property says we can add the two powers, the add to two exponents together. Well, why can we do that? Let's write these out and see what it really looks like. This first expression is 4 times 4 times 4. And that's being multiplied by 4 times 4 times 4. We know from our previous work in algebra that multiplication is both commutative and associative. It doesn't matter what order we multiply six factors, as long as they're all being multiplied together. So we can dispense with the parentheses, and what we're really dealing with is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, which is, of course, 4 to the sixth power. This property is nice because it allows us to dispense with all this other work and just go right to the point. 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 3rd is 4 to the 6th, because when you multiply 3 4s together with 3 other 4s, you are multiplying 6 4s together, and there is no need to write them all out in order to simplify that expression. Now it's time to hit some examples. Consider 5 cubed 
times 5 to the 8th power. As in the previous example, we are multiplying 3 fives by 8 more fives. We are multiplying 11 fives together. So, we can simply write that out this way. In similar fashion, this will apply to other situations where you might have a question. Does this apply to negative exponents? Let's do the long work first and see. 2 to the 4th is, of course, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the negative 7 means that 2 to the 7th power needs to be written on the bottom of a fraction. That turns this into a fraction in its own right. On top, you'll have the four twos that came to us from 2 to the 4th. On the bottom, in the denominator, you're going to have seven twos being multiplied together. But we can reduce that fraction. Plenty of the factors in the numerator and denominator are, are common. The twos will cancel each other out on a one-to-one -one basis. And remember that whenever everything in a fraction is canceled out in either the denominator or the numerator, the placeholder is 1. So the result is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 2 to the negative 3. And that means that all that long work that we did is no longer necessary. Just as in the case of positive exponents, we can add these exponents together and get a result quickly. All of this is unnecessary. You can simply go from the problem uh, as presented to a conclusion using the property that we've already discussed. An expression like this can throw people off sometimes, but remember, multiplication is associative and commutative. It doesn't even matter what order we do this. The property that we have relies on two, prop on two operations that are both associative and commutative. In order to do this multiplication using the property that we've got, we get to apply properties of addition to the exponents. The result is that we can rewrite this as 7 to the negative 2 plus 6 plus 3. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. This is 7 to the 7th power. What if you can't see an exponent? Well, you need to remember that no number ever walks alone. In this case, we have a, and it appears to be by itself, but every number has an exponent. We just don't always need to write it or use it. In this case, we do. Whenever you see a variable acting on its own, it actually has an exponent of 1, if you need it, and we need it. Now, using the property that we've been working with, 1 plus 4 is our new exponent, so this is a to the fifth power. In similar fashion then, if we have three factors, including one such factor, sitting apparently by itself, that n actually has an exponent of 1. The 7 cannot be put together with the n's, we don't know what they are. The convention is to write the coefficients first, and then complete the multiplication we have n to the third times n to the first, which is, we now know, n to the fourth. And then n to the fourth times n squared is n to the sixth power. Finally, consider 3y squared times 2y cubed times 6y to the negative fifth power. First, handle the coefficients. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Then, add the exponents of the powers. 2 and 3 are 5. 5 and negative 5 are 0. So we have 36y to the 0. In this situation, we assume that y will not be 0. Of course, if y were 0, then this would be an undefined expression. But as long as y isn't 0, this will simply be 36, because anything other than 0 raised to the 0 power is 1. 
what if our expression has two variables? Remember the warning I delivered when I first introduced this property. You can't use the property in this section unless the powers involved have the same base. We can't do anything with B in this context because it is not a term that has a common base with any of the other factors. So B is not going to be touched. It will still be present in our answer. We can, however, put a to the fifth and a cubed together. a to the fifth times a cubed is a to the eighth. And then, of course, the b is still there. It cannot be combined with the a to the eighth in any way because they don't have common bases. This is as far as it goes. In similar fashion, then, an expression like this can be handled. First, do the coefficients. 2 times 7 is 14, and 14 times 2 is 28. X is not a common base with any other power, so we'll leave it alone. Y to the fourth times Y cubed, however, is Y to the seventh power. And that's the result of that multiplication. Finally, consider M cubed times N to the negative 4 times 8M. Well, first of all, no variable walks alone. M has an exponent of 1. Second of all, we are not going to be able to put n to the negative 4 together with the m's in any meaningful way. It's just going to be carried along because n is not a common base with any other factor. Always do your coefficients first. 1 times 1 times 8 is 8. m cubed times m is m to the fourth. And then n to the negative 4 is simply along for the right at this point. Do be careful. If your instructions say to simplify, in many texts that means not to leave any negative exponents in your answer. To me, this is a great answer. But in some texts and courses, the instructor or the book will want you to take it one step further and write that as 8m to the 4th over n to the 4th, which is also correct. These two expressions are equivalent. The only reason I'm showing both to you is that some instructors prefer one over the other, and you need to know that and adapt to it as necessary. Now that we've got this property at our disposal, it's easier to manage the process of multiplying numbers that are in scientific notation. To proceed here, remember that multiplication is associative. In theory, I can put any two, any two of the four factors you see in front of you together. Since we're working with scientific notation, however, we want to put the numbers that are at least 1 and less than 10 together, and we want to put the powers of 10 together to try to maintain the format. It's always best to respond to an exercise, question, or problem in the context in which it was given. If you're given an exercise where you have to multiply numbers that are in scientific notation, you should make every effort to give a response that is in scientific notation. So to start with, we're going to take 7 times 2.8. That's 19.6. Then we're going to take 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 4th. That's 10 to the 9th. We're not done because this number is not in scientific notation. The number in front needs to be at least 1, but less than 10. Well, we can rework this situation to make that happen by moving the decimal point to, to a position between 1 and 9. When we do that, we make that first number 10 times smaller. To balance that, we need to make our power 10 times bigger. So. The appropriate response is 1.96 times 10 to the 10th power. Here's our last example. So to make sure we know how to address situations with negative exponents. As in the previous example, we're going to multiply the front numbers, the, the first factors together, and we're going to multiply the powers of 10 together. So we start by taking 9 and multiplying it by 1.5, which is 13.5 and then taking 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the negative 4 which is 10 to the negative 2 after adding the exponents. 
This isn't an appropriate response yet because it's not in scientific notation. The first number has to be at least 1 and less than 10. To make that happen, we should move the decimal point to a position between 1 and 3. In doing that, we made that first number 10 times smaller. That means we should make our power of 10 10 times bigger. Well, 10 to the negative 1 is 10 times bigger than 10 to the negative 2. A common mistake here is to have 10 to the negative 3. That actually makes it 10 times smaller. You need to remember that when you multiply 10 to the negative 2 times 10 to the first power, which is what you're doing when you make things 10 times bigger, you add the exponents. It should be 10 to the negative 1. Hope you find that useful. The examples are, are the main resource in this show me because the property itself is simple enough to look at. In its application, however, there are a lot of little pitfalls you have to watch out for. Again, make sure you have common bases. And make sure you remember that if you don't see an exponent, there's still one there. It's a 1, and by convention, we don't have to write it. But if you need it, you probably need to write it in so that you can do your problems involving a variable to the first power. Finally, remember that after you've multiplied the parts of two numbers in scientific notation together, you still have to make sure that your response is in scientific notation, and be careful when you manage those exponents and move decimal points around so that you don't change the meaning of your answer. You can find more things like this, and you can ask me questions to help you with your homework and other problems at my blog at mikepoliquin.com.